Hi, today we're gonna talk about how to do and how to carry the Marinette boss fight, the meta event. It's a very, very hard event because it has a lot of personal responsibility. If one person dies, it can result into a full wipe of the whole meta event, which is a, you know, 10, 15 minute uh, meta event, so it's not a good feeling to wipe. And why is it so easy to fail? Well, it's because in this boss, you'll have to protect five lanes and each of the lanes you want at least 10 people around that time because each of these lanes will have to go to the gate and will get divided into five bosses the bosses will be the same but they'll be essentially uh, clones of themselves and that group is gonna have to beat all of them in order to progress to the next uh, phase the next lane you have to do this five times in order to actually win the whole encounter Three fails if you're very good at protecting the gates because each time of one of those ads gets to the gate the bar progresses a bit, uh, a bit much and two uh, or maybe even one if you're very bad at uh, protecting the gates especially because if the big champions uh, the nightmare champions go to the gate uh, you will lose a lot of progress and uh, you and you don't want that right now the thing is each time if you go to one of the lanes to fight one of the bosses, you will get a debuff that will prevent you to go to your other bosses therefore you can only get 10 people in for each of the lanes so two people per boss in each of the lanes. That will, and this will make it way harder for you to uh, succeed because if you fail, those people will no longer be able to fight another boss. Therefore, you have lost the opportunity. Now, how do you carry this event in order to win it? First, you want to get a lot of people. You want at least 48 to 49 people out of, the, out of the 50 that you can get into a private instance because otherwise you won't be missing people in the lanes and then they're gonna have to solo their boss because you have 10 people per lane, you get the battle five times, two, 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 and if you have nine people instead of one person will be alone. You don't want that at all because otherwise they might actually fail against the boss, they will not have someone to revive them and you will lose the whole lane. Now, you could also do it in public to get more than 50 people, but here's the problem. If you go to public and you can, as a squad, uh, if one person goes to the private one, they'll create an instance and that private instance will be prioritized, will be shown instead of the public one when people join the Eye of the North. Therefore, it'll be very, very confusing for most people and, uh, and most people will eventually end in the private instance instead of the public one, not knowing what to do. So, if you're gonna organize uh, this as a commander, uh, we, and telling people to go to your squad, I would heavily, heavily, heavily recommend for you to go and put a private tag instead. That way you'll be able to uh, honestly organize it very, very well and um, you'll not have these issues. Now, how do you get people? I would heavily recommend going to core maps uh, like Divinity's Reach, Lion's Arch, uh, Eye of the North, uh, or HOT maps like Verdam Brink because these maps are full of new players that actually want to participate in this, into this course events. Marinette is core. You don't need a living world season. You don't even need an expansion to do it. So getting as many people, even if they're uh, new players, it's a great idea. The mechanics are not even that hard. As long as you explain to them, you probably will be fine. Now, while you're getting people, you should organize the squad into five subgroups. One from lane one, 1, 2 for lane 2, 3 for lane 3, 4 for lane 4, 5 for lane 5. That way you have each of the subgroups for each of the lanes, it has a number by it, so people will understand it. You probably should tell them either way, sub 1, lane uh, number 1, sub 2, lane, uh, lane or number 2, and so on and so on, because some people get confused with the numerals, might as well just explain it. You should also do slash 1 in the squad chat, in the squad broadcast, and type, if you see this, you should be in lane 1, then go to slash 2, uh, if you see if you see this, you should be lane two, blah blah blah, blah and so on and so on, and you will act, and those messages will only broadcast to the subgroup that you put on. If you do slash one, it'll go only to, sl to uh, subgroup one. If you go slash two for subgroup two, so that way people will exactly understand where they should go, and you will have less people going to the uh, to the wrong lane, which honestly can bruise a wipe if you don't have enough people in each of the lanes and uh, one person has to fight alone one of the bosses. Now, even if you tell everyone to go to the correct lane, some people will actually miss this and will go to the wrong lane and they will leave some lanes with nine people instead of, of 10, which will make one person solo one of the bosses. What do you do then? Well, there's one way to prevent this. As a commander, and honestly, other people can do this too and you can tell them to do this, but as a commander, you should definitely do this, is that you should go to, let's say you're lane four, you should probably be in lane four. Well, actually, what you can do is go into lane one even at the start, even though that's not your correct lane, see that everyone in the lane uh, gets in and that you get 10 people 
on the bosses, so two per uh, mini boss in the lane. And if this is not the case, you can actually go and join yourself. That will you will save that person that is alone, and you will be able to carry that lane. But now you think, well, if that's the case, wouldn't I be missing the next lane that I actually have to do? The the uh, the lane that where I'm supposed to go in the first place. Well, actually, what you can do is that after doing this lane one, you know, as an emergency, you can change characters, and the other character you use will not have the debuff that prevents you to go to the next boss. Therefore, you can do this in each of the lanes, checking out if all the lanes are fine with the amount of people they have, and if they're not going in, changing characters, going in, changing characters, uh, and that way you can carry each of the bosses. Also, each of the bosses will have a different mechanic that you should explain to your squad. The first boss will be invulnerable from the front and vulnerable from the back. So what you want one person to attack it from uh, the front, essentially just tanking it, another person attacking from behind. I would really heavily recommend to not move too much because otherwise you will never be able to catch the backside and you will not be able to attack it. And you can also use pets like mechanists or rangers to actually tank the boss and that way you can actually solve it pretty uh, easily. That For that reason I would have recommend to have in subline 1 most uh, of the mechanists in the group and most of the rangers in the group. Of course you should probably tell people because you need achievements for this, you could actually tell people to move themselves to the lanes they want to be at, uh, but if you have the chance to let people know or, or more people that are mechanists uh, or rangers to go to lane 1 sub uh, sub uh, subgroup one you should because that will make it way easier e even if someone is alone they could probably solve it this way lane two you essentially just have to lure the boss into its own mines in order to make it vulnerable it's very easy just run around and make uh, kite him into his own mines they'll explode and you'll be able to attack it lane three you'll essentially have to just dodge attacks from the boss break the bar of the boss bring big cc for this and uh, kill those little bombs or just evade them or get away from them uh, to not die by the by the attacks of the boss. Lane 4 is a bit harder. You essentially have to evade an oil that appears in the edges of the room and in the center. Uh, and this will change by periodically. And uh, you will also have to dodge or ages or completely just run away from this missile's boss launches towards you. Any of these things will one-shot you, so you want to be sure to evade them. And while you're doing this, just attack the boss and you will be fine. Now, here comes the hard part. Boss 5. This boss is actually pretty hard. What essentially will happen is that you will have one mob that is pretty easy to kill, but then this mob will divide into two. And then when you kill one of them, that one will divide into two. And then that one and those two ones will divide into two again. And so eventually you will get a lot of mobs attacking you. So what I would recommend? First, you should probably bring blinds, CC, survival abilities, movement, anything that makes you survive a bit more. Uh, Rain being raised is actually pretty nice here because you can just guide them down while you're attacking it. Be sure to revive your friends if they go down. And I would heavily recommend to, whenever they divide, kill, focus on one of them. And the ones that come out of that one, because otherwise you will attack both, they will multiply, 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 and you will get overwhelmed. Focus on one of the ones and the ones that come out of that one. That way you will be fine, you will not get overwhelmed, and then you go to the next one. And the big thing that you should definitely, definitely do in Duel for Boss 5 is that when Boss 5 appears, Lane 5 appears, it will actually be, it's very, very, very likely that Lane 1 will no longer have debuff that prevents them to go to the next lane. So you can just tell everyone from Lane 1 to go to Lane 5 as well, so you will have double the amount of people, and that will, the way you can just carry this boss with numbers. If you do this, I would recommend to tell the other lanes, lane, uh, the other lanes that are not doing the bosses, to send one or two people to lane one so they can, you know, replenish and protect the lane in just in case they fail. But usually, when you do this, it'll be fine and you will be completely okay. Uh, you'll defeat the boss. You'll win the fight. Awesome. Also, remember, guys, to kill the regulars after you kill the bosses because if you don't do this, the fight will not end. You will not succeed the lane. Also, very important thing, you should always tell people to not bring healers, only hybrid DPS or DPS, because honestly, even though healers are nice and awesome, uh, but because of the fact that you only have another person with you, uh, the damage is way more important, and it might actually be that if you have a healer, uh, the boss will just not die in enough time, because there's a timer of two minutes, and then you will eventually, you will survive, but you will not kill the boss, and you will fail. 
Another good trick for any of the bosses is bringing them down, bringing them to the edges of the circle, that way the other lanes can actually help you with it, uh, and attacking it with AoEs a little bit, and actually heal you as well if you put yourself there. Also, there's when you win one of your uh, one of your circles, one of your bosses, you'll be able to cheer uh, to give boons and different things to the uh, to your teammates trying to kill the boss. Now, what happens if you fail one of the lanes? What will happen is that if, for example, let's say you fail lane one, boss one, that's the first boss. What will happen is that boss one will now be in lane two. Then boss two will appear in lane three. Boss 3 will appear in lane 4, boss 4 will appear in lane 5, and boss 5 will appear in lane 1. Therefore, everything will get delayed. If this happens, just move everything one more lane again. Just move everything one lane further, and everything will be fine. I will also leave some copy pastas in, in the description for the Marinette guide. For the Marinette, and a, gui a written guide that we put in Hearthstone.gg. So, go check them out. Now, that is all the mechanics of the boss. If you have any ideas that I honestly I missed, or any other things that you want to say, any questions or anything, we do this, you can, you can put them in the comments below, or subscribe to my channel on Twitch, or follow there, subscribe here, ask me questions one more live, when we're doing this every weekday, ask me, and, uh, and come to train whenever you want. I will be happy to help. Have a good one, guys, subscribe to the channel, and bye-bye.